Hello, everyone. <coughs> fuck. What the fuck? Why did I say it like that? Hello. <laughs> it's Q. How you doing? If you don't know what a Q is, essentially, this is a scriptless video where I just rant and rant about things that are happening. And really, it's one of those times where I don't really feel like editing. And I just want to pump out a video as fast as possible on the hottest topics. And at the end of this video, I do take your questions. Any questions that have the hashtag Q in front of the or after the comment in any of my videos, I will answer. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. Today's topic will be on, I guess, several different allegations. At first, this was going to be about Riot Games. Riot Games, of course, if you haven't noticed the past few days, um, there was a walkout at Riot Studios where many of their employees walked out and striked against the company for various different allegations that have been heading their way that have never really been resolved before. Um, th these allegations, of course, being like sexual misconduct or uh, gender, uh, gender abuse. Or <laughs> fuck, I don't know what to call it. Well, let's just say there was a lot of sexism and a lot of horrible the different things going on a, a lot of it, it was just really an uncomfortable work environment for any riot employee uh there's even allegations of like people like making inappropriate jokes sexual jokes rape jokes all kinds of stuff uh and of course many of their employees stepped out of the offices and decided to protest against this bullshit and they should because honestly the work environment in any video game company is pretty bad um the, you know, some game companies i've worked for in the past don't even offer any sort of health insurance or dental insurance whatsoever and the, the ones that did still paid at minimum wage and i mean like just above minimum wage a fucking waiter probably had more money than i ever made when i was just a qa tester for certain companies um and so the work environments in many companies are just just abhorrent honestly and it's nothing new uh and like i said this was going to be originally about riot games specifically but i'm just learning that like doing some research on this bullshit there has been way more there's nether realm studios for christ's sake who recently had allegations that their shit is uh pretty unhealthy to work for uh there's a lot of sexual allegations there and a lot of uh, the people making inappropriate jokes, their employees being pretty fucking shitty to each other. Uh, there's also allegations from different companies in the past. So like, uh, I believe David Cage's studios, I forget the name of it. Uh, the, the people who made, uh, Detroit become human. They also had a pretty bad work environment where they would just, they would just, uh, send each other lewd photos. They would Photoshop each other's faces onto other people's bodies, or like they would just make fun of their bodies through emails. And of course there's also also, allegations from EA Studios or, or the people who work for EA. So BioWare also had some pretty bad shit. And of course, you know, of Telltale Games who basically weren't notified that their company was being liquefied and destroyed from the inside out. And all the employees had to seek employment the day that the news was announced. Working for a video game company is not splendorous, and I could list off a bunch of other examples. Another one I can think of is Rockstar Games and the overworking people that are in the studios who develop the games overnight, probably not for extra pay, because I know when I worked as a QA tester, I wasn't even given extra pay for overtime, and I know the developers are probably, and I, I know that they're paid way more than I am, but they fucking deserve some extra pay as well. Uh, I remember crunch time being fucking hell. I, I, I won't listen i'm not gonna fucking lie to you i'm uh I, i'm not gonna act like a manly man who doesn't cry but there was a time in crunch time where i worked for a video game company where i actually broke down to my girlfriend i was like dude i can't fucking stand this shit like i am seriously gonna blow my brains out this is fucking hideous i i am literally working oh fuck my eyes <laughs> Sorry, the glass part of my glasses just fell out. Yeah, I know, they're broken. I should get new ones, but I, yeah, anyways. So, yeah, I, I remember just breaking down and just being like, dude, I, I can't fucking work there anymore. Like, I, I love being a QA tester, but I actually can't fucking work as a QA tester with them anymore because they're asking so much out of me. I'm not even exaggerating when I say this, but I seriously spent at least six days of my week just in that fucking studio trying to break like find bugs and break the game and all that shit i i, I was I, i'm pretty sure i worked like 16 hours a day as soon as i came back home the only thing i could do was actually just sleep 
And then after I slept for about like six hours or so, I had like two hours where I could spend time for myself, not even with my girlfriend, because she would actually um, be at, at, in, in college at the time. So I, I couldn't even see my girlfriend for six days and she would live alone at night. And it was a scary thing. And that's why I had to quit early. Um, so I, I understand the, the fucking mental thing, the, the, the mentality that you have while you're working in those game companies, even though I'm only, even though I've only been a QA tester for certain companies, I know that sometimes those work environments can be very toxic. Now, listen, I met some pretty cool dudes. Like seriously, I met some close friends of mine through video game companies and through, um, QA testing and such. But not everyone was a good friend. I remember some of my seniors, the people who worked for longer than I ever have, uh, many of them were awesome people. But I do remember this one certain instance where I had to work with a certain senior who was just a fucking ableist asshole. I'm not even saying that as like an SJW Tumblrette kind of dude. He is actually an ableist because I remember we had a... Oh man, I don't even know if everybody's saying this, but I'm not saying which company I worked for. There, I worked for multiple companies, but there was this one employee who couldn't use his arms that well. Um, he was born with a birth defect, and he, he could still play games. Like he's still pretty fucking great at uh, video games, and especially the game that we were playing. And I remember this dude actually made fun of him actively. Like he would vigorously go after this one guy who had the birth defect, and. This guy didn't do shit to him. Like, he was not a bully, and they weren't really close friends. I don't even think they were friends at all. I think they were just, like, acquaintances. I haven't worked in that environment that well, but I remember he would just keep saying, like, Oh, you know, your fucking arms don't work that well, you piece of shit. Why are you even playing this game? Like, and he's supposed to be saying it like it's a joke, but I got fucking mad over this guy. I, I wish I'd said something, but this other guy, the, the unfortunately, the, the handicap guy, was basically laughing it off. He said, haha, good one, man. And I could tell it was making him uncomfortable because it made all of us uncomfortable. And, like, he didn't have to stand up for that. He, he didn't have to, like, lay down on his back and get assaulted by all those horrible, um, horrible fucking insults that this one dude was saying against him and for no reason again he was just a sour motherfucker he he was basically a piece of shit to everyone except for people above his position which is basically our boss um but he was especially hateful towards the guy who's disabled like he would say the worst kinds of insults especially towards his disability um and he would he, he was just a fucking piece of shit and that's that's just one dude in our entire company again the rest of the people were pretty awesome. They were nice, generous people. Um, some of them stick in the muds, but you know what? They're not as bad as the dude I'm, I'm talking about. Um, and I can't say if he works there anymore because <laughs> let's just say the company I used to work for, where he worked at, um, <laughs> they, they got rid of a lot of people. <laughs> let's say that. And that's another thing. These game environments, like, they, like working in these... Uh, video game companies, it's not even a reassuring thing that you'll even have that job for the rest of your fucking life. I remember reading an article seeing that the, the title was essentially working at a video game company is essentially like waiting for a guillotine to come down on your head. Like, it is fucking scary because there are always these things like Telltale, again, or Activision Blizzard, uh, getting rid of thousands upon thousands of employees because they need to without any warning there's no preparation there's no people like saying hey the, we're gonna close down this studio in about two weeks uh we're gonna give you benefits and stuff like that we'll, we'll, we'll pay you off for the next couple of months for your unemployment blah 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 there's nobody saying that you will be fired or you could stay and face probably horrible ridicule like the one guy i described it is just a horrible horrible place to work at and again I shouldn't be saying this like it's everyone or it's every game company because there are certainly a ton of video game companies that are just a blast to work for. But it makes me wonder with all these things happening, especially with Riot Games, it got me thinking how many companies out there, not necessarily video game companies, but how many companies, media companies are working right now on either video games or entertainment like you know some youtube uh 
uh, entertainment companies here that work on this platform, uh, how many of them are also facing allegations or also handling or mishandling certain things like sexual misconduct or racism within the work environment? How many of them are mishandling that kind of shit because, because they can't afford losing that person, that person that is being allegedly uh, a sexist or a racist or a bigot or whatever? Or how many of them just don't want the bad press and they don't want that getting out? Or how many of them are afraid of having a disgruntled employee just emailing a bunch of game journalists saying this, this, and this, and that, you know? it's it's a scary thing and i wish the video game companies would actually take this shit seriously because as it is now it is a very toxic place to work for like like with all this bullshit happening i would say like 75 percent of the video game companies you work for will probably be just as toxic and will probably never change and it's it sucks i don't know why it sucks but it just does i mean i can i can guess why but i don't want to play armchair psychologist but i have a feeling that it's because that the people who work for these companies don't have real social skills and listen i'm not insulting gamers i'm not trying to generalize gamers i know all of y'all are so cool y'all hang out with your friends y'all hang out and shoot some hoops you know at your local basketball court whatever but the thing is is that when it comes to video games it's a very introvert activity and that's not a bad thing it's not a bad thing to be introverted or it's not a bad thing to just hang out to yourself and, and just be by yourself and just you know chill with yourself whatever but when you lack the social interactions of other people or you lack the social awareness that other people have because you have been playing video games your entire life or you've been developing video games your entire life or the social skills needed to actually interact with other human beings then chances are you're probably going to treat other people like crap again there's nothing wrong with being introverted but also building up your social skills can really help you interact with other human beings and have good friends I know I'm sounding repetitive and I probably sound like your mom or your, or your dad like lecturing you about not playing video games. Listen, I play video games all the fucking time, right? But even I realize that doing that will make me a lonely person. Like if I just do it 24-7 and not interact with a single human soul, like I'm not going to know how to fucking interact with a human being next to me if I just keep playing video games. I've been just seeing like talking to people online all day. Uh, Listen, it's it's just the matter of fact is uh, game developers and most likely QA testers or whoever works in the video game company, they probably don't have that perception. They probably don't know how to interact with other people. And again, this is just an assumption. I'm playing armchair psychologist. I'm acting like I know what the fuck is going on when I really don't. But it's just what I think is happening. And I also think that the reason why these video game companies aren't being treated or, or rather aren't treating their employees with the respect that they deserve is because they're not unionized. Of course, like I said, there are some companies that I work for that had no dental, no health insurance. And even the ones that I did, uh, they didn't offer any other benefits or, or any sort of insurance saying that if I quit or if I, you know, I don't know, get injured in the workplace somehow uh, that I'll be, you know, treated well by the company. Or for the matter of fact, fuck that. Some of the companies that I did work for that had healthcare and dental actually just implemented that shit like months before I worked there. And some of the companies I worked for have been companies for years and they just implemented this shit. Listen, at the end of the day, I don't know how to totally change this i think a union for video game developers and for qa testers or anybody who works within the electronic arts um i believe unionizing them would probably make them more serious employees for uh video game companies i keep saying that i should probably think of something else video game companies video game companies that's what i've been saying this whole time but seriously, if they were to unionize, I think they would take them more seriously and actually give them benefits. If not, then they'll probably face lawsuits. And yes, I know Riot Games would also probably face lawsuits, as well as NetherRealm Studios for doing the same sexual misconduct and bullshit that they did. Actually, I'm not totally sure what they... I, I think it is sexism. It's always sexism, man. Fucking horny gamer guys, when they see a lady, they always want to fuck them. Man, I don't know. Anyways... Seriously, it, it, I know that they'll probably face lawsuits, but it probably won't be as bad and they'll probably win. 
you know, they'll probably settle it out of court. And I've been saying probably this whole time. That's what happens when I don't have a fucking script. <sighs> Anyways, again, I don't know. I don't have a solution. Unionization, maybe. I don't know. Uh, probably uh, having these dudes talk outside of the office will probably help them out too. I don't know. All I know is it is a fucking nightmare. And the fact that more and more and more and more of these stories come out like every month, I'd say, and they get pretty much covered and then ignored the next day isn't helping. I know we all think that the Riot Games thing is an egregious piece of shit that is unfortunate that happened in that one situation, yet understand that most of us will probably forget about it in about a week, and most of us will probably still play League of Legends next week, or tomorrow, or today. You know, you can't boycott a game like that, especially since it's free to play and there's no way to stop the millions of people who play that game around the world. It's it's futile to be like that, but acknowledge what had happened and don't let them forget that. Don't let them get away with that because Nether Realms could also get away with that. Bioware could get away with overworking their people or EA could get away with that. Uh, fucking uh, fucking Rockstar could get away with overworking their employees or <sighs> Telltale Games is practically already getting away with the fact that they just Un, like made thousands of their employees unemployed overnight you know it, it sucks but as long as you remember what has happened and you remember the past and you don't allow this to just slip up and just be like hey it's a thing that happened oh well bye as long as you remember it then we can at least move forward and hopefully make a better future <sighs> but i don't know Am I just rambling? Am I just like talking on my ass? Do I really not know what the fuck I'm talking about? I'm just a QA tester. I, at least I was a QA tester. Um, but yeah, just it, it, trust me. If, if you think about <laughs> if you're thinking about becoming a QA tester, let me tell you some things. You're going to be paid shit. You're going to be overworked. You're probably never going to see your social life ever again. Trust me. It's I'm not joking. You're seriously never going to have a social life. Um, and uh, it fucking sucks and probably not worth it. <laughs> So, <laughs> keep that in mind if you want to be a QA tester. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for listening. This is not the end. What the fuck? I'm acting like this is the end. Um, no, we have a queue. We have to answer questions, right? That's a thing that we have to do. Anyways, let's move on to that, shall we? All right, first question. By the way, this is a very special YouTube edition of because I've been answering a lot of questions from Twitter and Discord, not enough from YouTube. So all these questions came straight up from Q or rather, straight up from YouTube or from you, the audience. Thank you. Um, so let's get started with Jesse's Game Room, who asked Q, how has your day been going? I actually want to answer this question because I am going to be honest with you. I have been having a very sore left arm, and I've been worried that I'm going to have a heart attack. So if I have a heart attack and I upload this video, um, hey, that's ironic. Please put that in Chill's top 15 video of people who have died on YouTube. But seriously, though, I think it's just because of stress and my head hurts. And I, I know I sound a little quiet. I've just been feeling sick lately. Um, hopefully I won't die. If I do die, fuck me, I guess. You know, we're just about to hit 100,000, so... That'd be a very convenient time to die, just before I hit 100,000. Whatever. Anyways, thank you for your question. I've been feeling like shit. That's that's the answer. <laughs> thank you so much. Alex is a nerd asked, are you an oo-woo or oo kind of guy? I'm an oo-woo, honestly. Um, oo would mean that I'm surprised or very happy to see people. Oo-woo would mean like I'm very content with myself. That's what I am. I'm just selfish. I like me. I don't really like other people. <laughs> Speaking of antisocial motherfuckers. No, I don't really care about other people except for like people that I'm friends with or the people that I love. You know, um, other than that, I like me. I like the people around me. I don't like anyone else. So fuck your owo. I like the uwu. So thanks for the question. <laughs> that was fast. That was a fast two question combo right there. Anyways, next question is by Tinybot. Is there a game genre that you think it ugh, that you think is not the same as it used to be, or just became way blander slash samey? Holy shit! Um, that's a good question. Jesus Christ. Um, I would say, is there a genre? I mean, JRPGs have always been the same, legit. Like, 
I'm not really that big into JRPGs, but the ones that I have played, you know, Final Fantasies, Tales of, whatever. Um, I just feel like they've all been the same, you know? Like, the only time I've ever felt like a game has been very different, a, a JRPG has been very different, is Eternal Sonata. And nowadays, everything else is like Eternal Sonata. Or more like Tales of, you know, the Tales of series where you could just control your characters around. I'm just not a big fan of them anymore. I, I, I used to be. I really was into that kind of shit because it's like regular Western RPGs are, you know, the same shit. You basically walk around as this character you made. You're around the Metropolis area like Vampire the Masquerade or Mass Effect. Both games I absolutely adore and are considered RPGs. I love those games. Also Skyrim. But they're not really RPG-ish for me. When I think of an RPG, I think of stats, I think of leveling up, I think of all that bullshit, I think of cool-looking characters, I think of having a party, and all that stuff. And that's mostly prominent in JRPGs, but there has not been a JRPG that has captured my interest in a long time. I did recently purchase Nino Kuni, and I tried live-streaming that, but unfortunately, because my computer's a piece of fucking shit... I couldn't stream for too long, but that seems to have more promise. I understand that there's a kingdom builder in it, and I really loved Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles My Life as a King. Holy shit, what a title. I really love that game, and I'm hoping that it will emulate that sort of feeling. And the, even the fucking character looks like the main character. Look them up. They, they look exactly the fucking same. Um, so I guess the JRPG, you know, that has been basically the same. It's not really gotten better. It's just very formulaic. And I remember even in the mid 2000s thinking about that because I know that there were a ton of instances where I was just like, dude, this 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 is the same anime bullshit I've been playing since forever. Like, it's not that different. I don't know. I just haven't seen any sort of interesting deviations from JRPGs at all, which is like that's the one reason I haven't played many or haven't even tried any new ones. Again, the only reason I'm trying Nino Kuni 2 is because of that interesting little mechanic where you can make a fucking kingdom. That's, I've been yearning for that kind of fucking game for a while now, but I haven't gotten it from Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles My Life is a King 2 because it doesn't exist. <sighs> I'm hoping that that'll satisfy me, but I don't know. Any other games? I mean, I think it's kind of... Okay. Kind of weird for me to say first person shooters have actually been innovating for a long time now and i i know everybody everybody's typing their comments right now oh you're such a fucking westernized piece of shit you don't understand real real video games no 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 dude i get it all right i get it fps games super mainstream but i don't think of an fps when i think of an fps game i don't think just like Oh, running and gunning, having these AK-47s, whatever, blah, blah, blah. No, when I think of an AK... Fuck it, when I think of an AK-47, when I think of an FPS, I think of it a first-person perspective, not necessarily the S part, more like the FP part. And I, I have seen quite a few interesting FPSs in the past five, ten years, honestly. Even the more typical ones, like Battlefield... What was it? What, what did they call it again? Oh yeah, Battlefield 1. It's just called Battlefield 1. Um, I actually really love that game quite a lot. I put a ton of hours into it. And again, it's just another Battlefield game, but I love the setting. I love the weapons. I love the mechanics and the class system. I know it's just another Battlefield game, but I, it, it felt good, man. Like, I love that kind of shit, you know? So seeing that it has not only the mechanics have just stayed good stayed well fucking what am i trying to say no the mechanics are essentially the same but they still work better and they they are just getting better and that there are some mechanics of other fps games or other fp first person games that have been so interesting to me like lately that there's that whole parkour uh frenzy that's been going on where like oh you can grapple on stuff and also virtual reality is a thing that has been improving that genre, it's just, it's cool. It's just been getting better. Um, any other fucking genres? I don't know. Let me think about it. Fighting games have been actually pretty good lately. Like, really fucking good. Um, they can only get better. Let's see. Puzzle games. I mean, they're fucking puzzle. What the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> um, I, I just, I think my biggest gripe would have to be JRPGs. Honestly. I, I think that's my only gripe. And I think also Western RPGs as well, while, while we're at it. Like, I haven't 
played a Western RPG that has interested me in a while. Like, Fallout 4 is like, that's a good game, but I've played it already with Fallout 3 and New Vegas. Um, Skyrim again, love it, but I've already played it with other Bethesda games. Uh, Bioware games aren't really getting any better, you know they aren't. Um, fucking, what else? Mass Effect, I love the Mass Effect games, but there's never been anything out like that. Vampire Masquerade is also a game that I just recently discovered and I loved playing it. Uh, I loved it a ton. And uh, I think they're making a new... Yeah, no, they are making a new Vampire Masquerade game. So that's something to look forward to. But again, I don't know if that's going to be a good game. Because I have not seen a Western RPG that has hooked me on their, their concept or their story or their mechanics in a long time. In a long time. Like, I think the last game that has actually impressed me, like, fucking wowed me, was fucking Skyrim. <laughs> I, I would say Dragon Age Inquisition, but I haven't played that game. I'm sure if I play that game... Oh, wait, you know what? What's a good one? Witcher 3. Now, that's a fucking Western RPG right there. If you can consider it that. But I, I do. And I think that's a fucking amazing game. That's the last time I've ever actually been impressed. So, I, I, I don't know. I think RPGs in general are just getting kind of shit. Or they're just being too safe. I need to really be impressed. I'm hoping Cyberpunk 2017, 2078, or whatever the fuck it's getting called, I'm hoping that game is going to be something that's going to blow my mind away. As it is right now, it looks just like any other FPS game, kind of like Deus Ex, so I'm not too excited. But from what I understand, they're actually improving, and they're actually, uh, the new builds are looking way different than the older builds. So, I, I think those are going to be pretty good games. Uh, I, I don't know. We'll have to see. So, thank you so much for that question. That is such a good question, TinyBot. Alright, next question is by Mr. Weirdo. Are you going to do a face reveal? Nah. Legitimately, no. I'm not. If someone were to pay me like $30,000 to do a fucking, like, anything above $10,000 to do a face reveal, I'll do it. I, I mean, you just wasted your money, but sure, here's my face, I guess. No, I'm not going to do a face reveal. I, 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 It's so cliche. There's no point in me doing that. Like, I'm not self-conscious about my face. But I think that that sort of makes it more interesting. Like, my channel and my concept is like, if you don't know how I look like, I feel like it's more alluring and more mysterious. And it's like, who is he? I don't know. Who fucking cares, honestly? It, it, it's a mixed thing. Like, I don't want to do it because, number one, I think it'll make my channel more bland and boring if I were to reveal my face. And number two, I, it doesn't enhance anything either. Like it, like me showing my face or me having my face in the corner or like doing that kind of shit. I don't think that's, I don't think that's interesting. I, I think my main appeal is my voice. I don't think I'm an ugly guy, but I think my voice is far more attractive than who I am, honestly. So, I, I don't know. I think it's everybody does it everybody does it everybody fucking does the whole face reveal and then they do face fucking i know i know that if i do a face reveal and i start doing like videos with my face i could have more freedom to edit stuff and i could do more skits and stuff but i don't want to i really don't i just think it's cliche everybody has their face everywhere i just want to be that one guy that just does things with his voice and with his little character you know so, you know, thank you for the question, but I'm not going to do a face reveal, even when I get 100000 So, sorry for anybody looking forward to that. AP asks, do you like otters? Otter. Fuck, I can't read. Oh, my God. Otters. Why can't I even say the word? Do I like? Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're really, they're sexy little creatures. No, not, not, not in that, res not in that regard. I just love how they hold each other's hands when they're floating. That's adorable. Yeah, I like otters. Thanks for the question. All right, this question is by Mayo. He asked, what are your thoughts on how Valve currently treats its main titles of 2 getting taken care of and updated frequently and something like TF2 getting neglected and ignored? Um, oh, Jesus, I don't know. I think I'm so tired of Valve right now. Um, there's so much I want to say about Valve, but I, I feel like there's not enough to... Not enough energy for me to, to really rant on them. 
Um, because it's 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 the same old, same old. Everybody's talked about it. Everybody's talked about how Valve has basically abandoned their video games and has only been focusing on the business side of their business, um, which is fine. You know, fine. You want to... Steam is still good. Steam is pretty cool. Right? Awesome. Awesome. But expecting a video game out of them, like a new video game, it doesn't even matter if it's like a sequel to any of their previous games or anything like that. Because honestly, Left 4 Dead 2 still holds up. TF2 still holds up. Um, it, yeah, I know they get neglected. I don't think there's been... Is there even a TF2 esports scene? Because I don't even think there is. There should be, shouldn't there? There's not, I don't think. CSGO is also getting neglected. Um, that shit's just straight up dying. Uh, even though it has a loyal fan base, it's still dying. What else? Dota 2. I love Dota 2, but I, I'm, I'm sick of it. I don't know. It's like, is there going to be, like, the most likely thing? Not even talking about Half-Life 2, because we know Half-Life 3 is probably just never going to happen. It's, it's just never going to happen, you know? Uh, and I know, oh, wait, in 10 years, fucking... It's here, Half-Life 3! Or like, in two years, Half-Life 3 reveal! My point is, is that maybe it will happen, okay? Maybe it will. But it doesn't matter if it happens or not. It, at this point, even if it were to come out, nobody's gonna give a shit. It's just a meme now. When you release it, it's just gonna be a meme thing, honestly. Um, so, disregard Half-Life 3 ever happening, right? The most likely sequel that they would ever have for any of their franchises is Left 4 Dead 3. Left 4 Dead 3 is most likely going to happen, even though I know they're not working on it. But it makes sense because it is one of their oldest IPs. It is one that doesn't really have an esports scene and hasn't really seen any updates since the light of day uh, or since it saw the light of day. Uh, Team Fortress 2 is still getting updates or so whatever. Counter Strike still getting updates, whatever. Dota 2 still getting updates, whatever. Portal 2, I mean, why would there even be a Portal 3? I think it ended well and the writer, the main writer for Portal 3, and I think also the main writer for one of the main writers for Half Life 3 has left. Like, they, they're all gone. So don't even like expect a good half or rather Portal 3 sequel and for that matter a Half-Life 3 sequel uh, or Half-Life 2 sequel. Don't expect anything good because the writing uh, the writing staff the ones that made it good are gone, right? So I don't expect anything from their single player aspects anything at all. Um, but the more likely one to get a 3 is Left 4 Dead because that is one that Many people love still, but has not been updated or anything or has been neglected the most, I feel. And, you know, you can mod it to hell. You can have all these stages. In the end, it's just an empty carcass with mods. You know, it's like a fucking dead body with sweet armor, <laughs> you know. Um, I feel like that's the only one they would want to work on or, like, have a sequel to. Um, but the moment that there is a third game out of their main franchise that is the moment where we'll see a new wave of games from valve like all of them will start getting threes because the source engine i i, I don't know which one it is the source engine 2 i i don't know but the current source engine that they have their in-game engine is so outdated it's a good engine i mean it is such a great engine but it's so fucking outdated so in order for them to to you know convert most of their games over to the new generation they would have to make a new source engine and they would have to uh, make sequels for all these games so the moment i really do believe the moment we see a third out of any of the games be it dota counter-strike fucking tf2 whatever whoever gets the third first i imagine all of them are going to get a third it, it, i'm just being optimistic right but i feel like that's just the way it's going to be but right now, I don't think they're working on anything good at all. Artifact was shit, and that's just a card game. I love card games, but that was shit. It, it, it plays well, but the market is shit. How are they expecting anyone to play that fucking game? I don't know. I don't know. They're fucking stupid. Really, they are. <sighs> but yeah, anyways, that that's a thing. And then... I don't even know if they're making new IPs again, but if they are making new IPs, then that would mean that they're having they, they have a new source engine, 
and that would mean a new wave. But this new wave isn't going to happen because they're currently only focused on their 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 Steam thing, their their app. They're only focused on that. They're only focused on the business side of things right now. I don't see them making new games in the near future. But if they do, expect a wave of new ones because uh, that's just how I see it. Anyways, that, that that's how I see this going. They can't just have one new Source 3 engine game, right? They gotta show off that tech, so they gotta have like a new Left 4 Dead 3, Team Fortress 3, all these threes, all, all, or new fucking IPs. That's the only time I expect them to make games and actually give a shit about their old IPs. As it is right now, I, I'm saying this over and over again, I think their interest is in VR, but they haven't shown anything in the past two years when VR has been a thing, or the past three years I think it's been. They haven't shown interest at all. Even though they were interested at first, they haven't shown shit in, in that time frame. So don't expect anything new anytime soon. Um, just expect more Steam shit. And the competition with Epic Games is not helping either, you know? Like, I feel like they're really now more than ever focused on Steam than they have been on games. So, unfortunately, we're just not going to see anything new from them. So, sorry, but thank you so much for the question. Next question is by Badman. He asked, what's your opinion on tolerance beliefs people? Uh, I believe you're saying, like, like, what's my opinion on tolerating other people's beliefs? Like... How do I tolerate other people's beliefs? Well, listen, I don't want to suck my own ass. <laughs> That's such a weird way of saying that. But I really don't. I, I don't want to seem like I'm bragging here, but a lot of people always seem to say, like, I always have a level-headed uh, viewpoint of other people's stories, or I, I never seem to get angry over other people's stories, you know. Or uh, I seem to have an understanding of other people, right? Uh, whereas most culture here on YouTube, they're ready to bounce and just like fucking attack other people's beliefs and stuff. Um, honestly, I tolerate more people, more more than I should, honestly. I, I tolerate people because I'm very much tired of people being so aggressive, either aggressively nice or aggressively mean towards other people's ideologies and beliefs and shit. I, I see that all the time on YouTube, and I think it's cliche. You know what I'm talking about, like, oh, th I'm the angry movie review man. I, uh, I hated this movie, this fucking sucked. Or I'm the I'm the very mean, intolerable video game boy. Ooh, this, ooh, this game, ooh, it's so bad. Ooh, you know, like, everybody does that. It's fucking dumb. It's, it's fucking shit. And if I could be a middle schooler for a sec, it's gay as fuck. You know, it's stupid. You're all the same. I just, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to be like, I'm spreading love, yo. I'm not spreading love. I'm just, I just think other people got shit to say. I know I'm not the center of attention. I, I just want to understand why other people are saying this. I, I know, I know people aren't crazy. I just know in the bottom of my heart that people aren't crazy. I know they're not saying this because they seriously believe it. I try to understand people because I, I, I think people have something to say and I don't want to shut them down because they have an opinion that I don't believe in. I just want to give them a voice and I want to try to understand their voice, as crazy as it is. I want to try and understand their voice. Uh, but sometimes I, I can't tolerate it. Like, there's seriously sometimes where I just can't be like, oh, do, uh, I totally get you. No, sometimes you guys are just outright, flat out wrong. Like, just factually, you are wrong. I'm not gonna be here like, oh, flat earthers, well, I can kind of get no, on a fucking flat earthers. Y'all stupid as fuck. Get out of here. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not into that. Fuck that bullshit. But other times, I, I try to get it, you know. I just try to get it because I, I don't want to be those other people who are like angry video game guy. You know, I'm just I'm just a dude. My opinions aren't as valid as yours. You know, my, my opinions aren't that special. I'm just a guy with a microphone that happens to have nearly 100,000 subscribers. I, that doesn't mean anything. I'm just a dude. In, the, in my bedroom, I got no money, I ain't got no fucking special home, or I ain't got waiters or butter, but, butters, butlers, or anything like that, I ain't got a mansion, I ain't got, you know, a sexy loft in New York City, I, I'm not a senator, I, I ain't got shit to say, I'm not that special, right, everybody else, y'all got something to say as much as I will have something to say, 
I'm trying to get you. I'm trying to understand you. So that's my opinion. If that's your question, if that was your question, I'm sorry that I didn't really totally understand it. But if that were your question, then that's my answer. So thank you so much for asking that question. All right. Next question is by Stuff152. He asked, how long is your schlong, daddy? About two centimeters. Actual question. What slash who got you into YouTube? I think I've explained this once or twice before in different cues, but I don't mind repeating it because I know y'all don't always watch all the cues. Um, the one guy who really got me into YouTube, I guess that would have to be this one guy who I'm not going to name because he is a piece of shit. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to report that I have way more subscribers than he has garnered in the past eight years. <laughs> so... Uh, that's one thing to brag about, but when I saw his videos, I really wanted to get into YouTube because he, he played video games and he was very funny. I thought he was really funny. Um, not so much anymore. I think he's like kind of, he's, he's, he's a shit. He's a piece of shit. Really, he is. But when I saw his videos, I thought this guy's fucking funny. He makes me laugh. I get bullied often when I was, you know, when I watched him, I was in middle school, so I got bullied a lot, so when I got back home and I saw one of his new videos, I, I laughed and I, I I was able to smile and I was able to actually interact with someone on, on a social space and I thought I could never do that ever again. And this guy was a fairly large YouTuber. Uh, granted, he only had like about 30,000 subscribers, but you gotta keep in mind that the biggest people at the time had like about 50,000 or 60,000 subscribers. I think that was Smosh. Um, so this guy had a lot of subscribers behind his back so it was it was cool like it, it was really cool and the fact that he had all these fans and my lifelong dream has always been to be famous be it through writing or through making movies or through making music or or drawing which is you know all of them are my passions but however i do it i've always wanted to be famous and get rich off of my fame because I'm not, I, I don't want to sound vain, but I just want, I, I just want to make people laugh. I just want to make people happy because I know fucking the world sucks sometimes, you know, and you need to be reminded that it doesn't always suck, dude. It, it Sometimes it's really rad and that's why I make videos and I know the videos that I make aren't necessarily aiming towards haha, funny, hilarious, you made my day kind of thing. But I, I do get people who message me and saying that your videos make my day. You make me really happy. And that's why I do them, you know. So I, I know the original question, who got me into YouTube? It was that guy. If you want a name, I guess I'll go to the second person who made me want to get into YouTube, which is Chugga Conroy, who is a very honest to God, great guy, totally cool, total awesome, hardworking Let's Player who... He's just awesome. Like, y'all should really check out Sugar Conroy, but he got me into YouTube as well. Um, he's a much nicer version of the guy that I was describing. Um, but yeah, Sugar Conroy is really cool. He got me into that. Same deal. Didn't really get bullied by the time I discovered him, but I really love the fact that I could just come home, see a new video by him. Every day I would see a new video from him, and I would just be happy. And the fact that I was able to see all these other YouTube channels, you know, I was also doing YouTube at the time, by the time I discovered all these other YouTubers, but I wasn't as famous. I was doing stupid fucking Let's Plays that you'll never see because I deleted them all. Um, but I love the fact that YouTube became a new channel for me, like not even like, you know, oh, my YouTube channel, right? I'm talking about like this became a TV station for me, like when it got when it became Christmas. People were making Christmas videos. They were making videos uh, around the holiday season, talking about holiday gifts and holiday theme stuff. Or when it got to October, fucking Cinemassacre, James Rolfe, he did Monster Madness for nearly 10 years. I think it's been exactly 10 years, if not more than that. Um, and that's something I always look forward to every single fucking year. And same with uh, uh, Matt, Pat, Matt and Pat, who were part of Two Best Friends, no longer part of two best friends unfortunately but they used to make shitstorm scariness and i look forward to that every single fucking year and that's why i made that one christmas special on december because i wanted to be like one of those dudes and i was able to do that and i did it i made 25 fucking videos that month and i was able to have a christmas special where i interacted with everyone and it was awesome 
So now my dreams are coming true. I'm actually starting like my my dream when I was a kid was to have a Christmas special because I fucking love Christmas. I love the Christmas season. And that dream was accomplished last year. One guy inspired me. One shitty guy inspired me to become a YouTuber. And now I'm almost 100,000 strong. And I'm only getting bigger. And it's fucking cool. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the long-winded explanation, but thank you so much for the question. All right, next question is by Dorito Mango. He asks, do you prefer to make rant-type videos like the Sonic one or storytelling videos like the one about the Japanese cultist games or the ARG with the dead kid? Holy shit, wait, what? The ARG with the dead kid? What? What? <laughs> wait, which one is that? I don't know which one that is. Um... I don't, which one is, I don't, I don't fucking know, what, what? Which one is that? That sounds interesting. Have I made a video about that? That sounds really cool. Anyways, now, um, uh, storytelling or rant? I enjoy the rant videos. Um, no, actually I don't. <laughs> uh, the rant videos are the ones that give me less motivation to make. I'm not necessarily a big ranter as much as, yeah. This has been going on for at least 40 minutes now, so that's hard to believe, I know. But I'm not really into rant videos. I I, I can make the rants fairly easy when I write them. Um, but I'm not necessarily that great when it comes to editing them. I feel like there's not much to edit when it comes to a rant video. But when it comes to a storytelling video like you described, where I talk about the, uh, you know, the, the, the death cult in Japan... I feel far more motivated. I love working on those. And they are a bitch. They are a fucking bitch to uh, edit. They take a long time. Way longer than rant videos. But they are worth it. Because I love writing them. Oh, I love acting. I love, you know, actually editing them. And putting in whatever flavor I can to these fucking videos. I love doing them. Man, they are my favorites. Uh, so to answer your question, yes, storytelling all the way. Rant videos, not so much. I, I just, I feel deflated. You know, you know what it is? It's like, you ever feel so mad that you need to like punch a wall or like you need to de-stress somehow? Like you need to punch something, you need to write, write it down or something like that? Or hate fuck, <laughs> you know? Um, that's how I feel. As soon as I write it down, as soon as I record it, I get it all out of my system. I don't have any energy left to actually edit it. Um, but I do in the end because yeah. but it feels like sloppy seconds. You know what? I mean, it doesn't feel as good But when it comes to those kinds of stories, it's like Jesus Christ is like I've never I've never heard of that Japanese cult game until I discovered it So I loved working on that kind of shit because it was like it was entertaining all the way through so Thank you so much for the question. All right two more questions before we end this because this has been going on for way too long um one question from Bonnie Beach TV asked, have you ever been high or drunk? No, I've never been high. I'm kind of afraid to be high, honestly. I had a friend. Why am I saying I had a friend? I had a girlfriend. I have a girlfriend. <laughs> she got high. Uh, Jelly got high one time. She had a panic attack. And I'm like, dude, I'm not, I, I don't want to get through. I don't want to go through that bullshit. Um, but I have been drunk. I've been drunk at least twice or thrice. And that's about it. Uh, even though I drink a lot, uh, <laughs> not, I'm not an alcoholic or anything, but I can drink a lot. Um, I'm a heavyweight. I can drink probably an entire bottle of tequila and not be drunk. But when it comes to wine, I'm a real fucker. Like the most, <laughs> the, 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 the moment I drink wine, I'm tipsy already, man. I don't know why. I just don't know why, but that's just the way I am. But I, yeah, that's the only time I've ever gotten drunk. One time I got drunk because I broke up with my ex-girlfriend this stupid motherfucker i was so depressed i'm such a dumbass and i just started recording messages on my phone and i was thinking about sending it to her while i was drunk but i was like actually that's a bad idea that sounds like a bad idea how about we don't um and then i you know i just started crying my i'm such a fucking idiot don't do that don't drink after you're sad it's so stupid and cringy when you think about it um second time I got drunk. Actually, I think that was the second time I got drunk. The first time I got drunk was when I first discovered tequila. I just drank it. I just got drunk. I was just loopy. That's it. And the third time I got drunk was in front of my newest girlfriend, my girlfriend that I have right now. Um, 
and that's when I just spilled my heart out to her, and I was like, oh, I love you, um, you know, cringy stuff, I just love you so much, blah, 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 whatever. She, if you want to know the details, you can ask her. I don't remember that much from the night, so whatever. Anyways, um, yeah, thanks for the question. Bonnie, Bonnie, Bonnie Beach TV. Jesus, why do you say Bonnie, Bonnie? All right, last question for the day is by One Dixie Cup Just For You. <laughs> uh, he asked, any games you've been playing nonstop lately or maybe any games you have your eyes on that are coming out soon? Would love to hear what piques your interest. I actually, I haven't been playing that much right now. I guess I've been playing a lot of Magic the Gathering, but even then I haven't been playing as much as I probably should be. <laughs> Uh, actually, I'm, I think I'm playing just enough. I've been addicted to it for a while now. I I don't know. I, I think Magic Arena has been really... like I think it's great now. Uh, the beta version was okay, but I don't know. There was something about it that I just didn't like. I think it was just how slow it was. But now, it, it's like way better. So I'm playing that non-stop right now. Um, but there were also other games that I just played non-stop. The last time I remember actually like playing a game all week long non-stop no 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 fucking breaks in between was with persona 3 and i i think i just graduated high school and you know i didn't really have a job i didn't really have anything to do um i was hanging out with friends but all that shit you know but i i really wanted like time for myself and my mom and dad were gone to mexico and i was like yeah i'm gonna have the house to myself yeah nobody's gonna bug me literally all i did was just play persona 3 for like Five days straight, um, and I beat it, and it was awesome. It's great, cool, totally rad. Uh, I loved it. I loved it a lot. Persona 3 for the PSP, I think it was, or FE. I don't remember which one it was, but I, I think it was. Yeah, it was the PSP version. Um, I loved it. I loved it. I also remember playing Pokemon uh, X and Y, or was it? Yeah, it was Y. I played Y, and that was three days straight of just. Over 200 hours of gameplay. I love that game. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, I guess there was also Christmas, but that was not as long. For about two days straight. Now, when I'm saying two days, when I'm saying like days straight, I'm not saying like, oh, I just lay down in bed and play these video games all night long. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, is that I played these games for like way longer than I should have. For like days straight you know what i mean like oh i play this for like 12 hours one day and then the next day i play for another 10 hours you know like that's what i meant um i played this one game that i was very addicted to i was addicted to vampire the masquerade for a little bit but i didn't really play that much i played like maybe 12 hours of it um but not in a whole sitting i was like two hours a day at least um but i was addicted to this one game called pillars of eternity and I love Baldur's Gate, man. I really love that game. Uh, I got the HD version. I played that a ton, you know. Um, but I remember playing Pillars of Eternity. I haven't beaten it yet, but I loved playing that game because it reminded me of like old school Bioware games, like Mass Effect or or um, Star Wars Jedi shit. You know, I love those games. And playing that was just like, oh, it's just, it's just like being back at this. Back at when I was like in middle school playing these fucking games. Oh my god. It was awesome. It was awesome So I played pillars of eternity for like 60 60 hours or so and I'm still not close to beating it um, But yeah, that was that's probably the last time I've actually Have been hooked on a game and have been playing non-stop constantly it, My my girlfriend was gone. She was not at home at all so I was alone uh, for Christmas for like an entire month uh, so I just played that and other various games I just chilled by myself so yeah uh, that's my interest in video games I, I guess RPGs when it comes to RPGs I'm just into it Skyrim was a thing I was more into the modding scene than I was the actual game which I feel like was so unhealthy have you ever done that have you guys ever done that where you just like mod a game more than you have play the fucking game yeah that was me for Skyrim yeah uh, I should have played more of that. Um, let's see, what else? What other games have I played a lot of? Um, I beat Mario Odyssey in one sitting, but that wasn't very satisfying, to be honest. I, I was just like, eh, Mario, it's great, but it's not nothing special. Anyways, 
But yeah, guys, um, I think that's about it. Thank you all so very much for the questions. I know there's a lot of you that I have yet to answer. Oh, there is so much. I'm scrolling through them right now. Jesus Christ. I know some of you, some of these are not very serious questions, so I'm not totally worried, but I know some of you do have legitimate questions, so I will answer them when I can. Remember, if you want to ask a question for the next queue, which will be out maybe next week or maybe in two weeks, who knows? Um, I'll let you know, but please just know that if you do a hashtag Q in any of my comments, just ask a question, then put the hashtag Q, then I will answer that question in the next video, all right? Thank you all so very much for watching. I love you guys so very, very much. Goodbye.